What's up Legionnaires and welcome back. We're here with another 12-12 AD siege, uh, not siege, battle for you today. This is, there is no siege here. We have uh, no cowardice hiding behind walls today. It is just straight out in the open, a 3v3. And we have Georgia, Burgundy and Lorraine fighting on one side, on this side over here. And then on this side, on, um, on the right hand side, we have Saxony, we have Brabant and we have... Kiev. So we have some interesting factions uh, today, which some no major superpowers, I'd say. I mean, Burgundy's probably the largest uh, and like got the best roster out of the rest. And we, straight away, we've already got a charge over here. We have cavalry going in. We have Burgundy's gendarmes going against the Kievian nobles. That will be an interesting fight. I'd say the Kievian nobles will probably come out um, not on top, mainly just because the gendarmes with their armor in comparison to the Kievian nobles. But we now have support from the uh, well, guard axemen over here of Kiev fighting off against, um, well, uh, in support. I mean, there is this mountain chevaliers now in here. A lot of, like, melee infantry being just thrown in here. So this is the first real chaotic fight. I am taking part in this battle along with uh, various subs and uh, members of the Discord. So if you want to take part in battles on 1212 on the channel, then do join the Discord and um, well also subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. But um, but yeah, so I mean, this is I am playing as Georgia, so I'm playing as my well Georgia, one of my favourite factions now I'd say. But uh, yeah, so this is the first engagement's going on. Look at these armoured knights; they are insane. I mean, just they. The mod still looks amazing. I mean, here we go. So it looks like um, sergeants of Brabant are being set up, sent up. I think he's brought a load of sergeants. He's got cavalry as well. My archers are being forced back. And um, we have ordnance longbowmen over here. They need to start thinking about getting back because these gendarmes are going to catch him. But he's not realised. I don't think he's realised what's uh, to strike him yet. And uh, no, there you go. He's playing back. The uh, crossbows against crossbows. Enemies attacking our general, oh, he's shooting him. And here we go, another cavalry clash. My cavalry though is very heavily chevron. I mean, it's on three gold chevrons. It is losing the fight currently. I think that will turn around. And now we've got some Tazruli swordsmen coming in. I know I, I, someone told me how to pronounce the name. I've already forgotten how to pronounce their names. So Taz, Tazruli is how it's being said for now. But it looks like there's going to be some shock infantry also joining the fight. That will certainly help the, the cause. They have sergeants in here. It's just a whole... Look at this. It's becoming a huge blob of just all sorts in here. And then the cavalry over here as well. Needs some uh, archer support. And it's already now joining here as well. Lorraine's now getting involved. Oh, that's a good charge though. Brabant has just caught out a load of crossbows. That was a really good charge. And that's just going to rout those crossbows. Saxony is a bit late to join the fight. He's also got no archers because Saxony is such a small roster. It's an interesting faction to choose. But he has spammed out a load of dismounted Saxon Ritter. Which need focusing down because they can't use their shields. So you need to focus these ar these guys down. And he'll take them off bit by bit. He's also got shock infantry here. A different type of dismounted Saxon Ritter. A later period. Uh, and that's really it. He's got... Well, he's also got his Duke of Saxony. He's got Saxon Ritter on horse. But I think uh, Lorraine should really be able to win this. He should be able to use his pikes and his crossbows against them. We have gunners here from uh, Brabant. They're not even firing. They're just getting shot up by the, in the side. That's interesting. Over here, it looks like... Uh, well, the engagement of the infantry is now engaged. The Burgundian Chevaliers, though, are 13th century against 15th century units. One thing I find I've also been prone to do is... Players bring their most expensive unit and they don't realise that it's actually a 13th century unit. So then when it goes up against a mid-tier unit that's uh, cheaper, cheaper to buy, but it's from the 15th century, they're gonna the 15th century unit's gonna win because it's got better armour, better weapons, and it's gonna kill this unit. So these chevaliers here are actually gonna probably lose against Well, what they're losing against. It is Kievan Noble, so it isn't actually a mid-tier unit in this case. But it's going to lose against this unit just because it's better in, like, 
It's got better technology. Is uh, Halberds here as well? Getting caught out, getting shot in the side. They're being flanked. Halberds need to be supported with swords and something else. They need to like get put in the back. He also looks like he's. Uh, I'd say he's holding in this one. It looks like both sides are having stuff breaking. Oh, what's this? What's this going to be? Oh, it's a Kievan noble that's coming back. A general. General could possibly go into that, but it's close. He's got. He's going to win this fight over here on the very far flank. Some dismounted chevaliers against some more uh, axemen. But, I mean, I think Burgundy and. Um, or Burgundy and Kiev are just going to really destroy each other. It's not going to be a real winner coming out of this. I mean, maybe Kiev will win. He's got more infantry left. He's got infantry now fighting at his, his archers over here. This is not good for Burgundy. He needs to get his archers out of here. Um, the fight over here with Georgia. Still going strong against Raban. I mean, it's going all over the place. Really. This is not good, though. This unit has been surrounded by Dismount Devor. Kind of a waste, this uh, unit. One of the most elite units I could bring. And they're just getting surrounded and killed off by Devor. But we've won this fight here. We've won most of this fight here. There's still a few units, but we basically can win that. This is not good. He's just focusing down my uh, my swords that really need to get just sent in. They need to either go in here, or they need to go in here, which is even better. I need to free up cavalry as well to ride these men down. I'm not sure what I've got. I've got cavalry here. I've got my general here. He's going to just go to the back of all this. That's a good charge. Instantly gone. This dismounted Devor is now losing slightly. This is certainly going to support this unit. I might have been better going after all this mountain devour over here, but it's a long way for it to go. Here we go, swords going in. They're going to fight the Pavis. I'd say that the Pavis will probably win this fight. Actually, no, 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 the Pavis. If they sent all the units in, maybe the Pavis might win this fight. But he's sending one unit in at a time. This is never a good sign. Hopefully, we can uh, destroy quite a lot of these crossbowmen before they uh, use up all their ammo. And now they're getting focused in the back as well by other Genoese crossbows back there. Let's check out how Lorraine is doing. Lorraine is now helping over here in my fight against um, the Sar well against uh, sergeants of Brabant. That's excellent. He is losing this fight here though. He's going to lose his Pavi's crossbows if he's not careful. Oh, that could be a good charge. It's going to... Well, actually it's not going to be a charge. So I think they were actually trying to just walk through to support. And now they're uh, held up there. A lot of carry left though for Saxony. I'd say, oh gosh, I'd say Saxony's losing this fight ever so slightly. Just look at the amount of units breaking. And he's got less like ability with it. He's got pikes as uh, Lorraine, so he can just surround stuff. Oh, that's going to be a good charge. Very nice. I mean, yeah, it looks like, and that's huge. Duke of Brabant is breaking. Oh, but the Georgian general is also dead. He's charged into gunners. And he's died, but he's also... I mean, he's just got, like, attacked by everything. There's cavalry here, there's gunners. But he is dead. So that's really going to make a massive effect to the front line. Which is, uh... Not looking good. Lots of wavering units. I'm not quite sure why... Like, my units are winning the fight. But they're wavering. So it's very frustrating. This isn't good. I think I'm shooting more men in the... Actually, I am shooting quite a lot of the uh, sergeants here. I wonder if I'm getting any friendly fire though, but this is not good. We're now breaking here in the center, so he'll start to be able to surround and these breaking units will break even quicker. So at the moment, it looks like we are losing. I mean, Burgundy's doing a lot of damage to Kiev, but he's also lost his general. I believe Kiev's lost his general as well. So it's a fairly good trade. But there's a lot of Kievian infantry left and it's basically just fighting cavalry, which really is, can't do a lot. It's just going to eventually get broken down and killed. Look at these. He's just surrounded currently by like Kievan nobles. There he goes, cut down. Just some poor knight. But yeah, East Euro Eastern Europe meets Western Europe. And it looks like Eastern Europe won. And he's broken most of the stuff. All the cavalry's gone. If that cavalry returns, which... Where is it? It might... Um, it's very tired, broken, 
exhaust. Yeah, I don't know. It might not. This unit here has returned. He needs to not send it just back in. He needs to surround. Or go for, like, arch units that are lying around. But we are getting to a bit of a cold period of the battle. So, well, not just quite yet. But we are getting to a point where the fighting is starting to die off. It's just becoming um, little individual pockets of fighting. There's no real front line. But it's a long time. There's a lot of time left in this battle. Um, so I hope you got your snacks and your drinks. I probably will make a cut. Because there is some pretty boring uh, bits. Just a lot of build up. But it looks like Brabant is going to win the center here. But at what cost? He's lost his general. He's lost his cavalry. He's just got archers and uh, some infantry left. And that's all going to be very, very fragile. And he's actually got quite a large amount of his army left. This is Actually, this is a mix of Kiev and uh, Brabant then. So, But they've still got to fight a Lorraine, which is fairly healthy. And he's still got their general, most importantly. And he's certainly going to just beat up Saxony here. I think Saxony's general is still alive as well. He's just uh, pretty beaten up. Yeah, this is all that's left for the Georgian army currently. Four units of mercenary uh, Genoese crossbows. Which are pretty nasty in combat, but I just want to use every bolt up possible before I send these guys in. But yeah, there we go. I've broken there. So I think Burgundy's finished as well. Let's have a look. Burgundy. Yeah, look at that. Just a field of corpses. This is where the entire battle really for Burgundy and Kiev went down, and it's just a bloody mess. That is horrifying. I mean, there's a bit of fighting here, but this was just more of a massacre. Look at the amount, like I said, look at the amount of bodies of Chevrolets. Hardly any um, Kievan nobles in there. And it seemed like there was a fight back here as well. Yeah, this also looks like there's a lot of Brabant, uh, not Brabant, um, Burgundy troops. Sergeants, by the looks of it. But yeah, so that's uh, what happens when you bring the wrong century troops against, uh, well, a lower century troops against a uh, high century troops. So like, well, yeah, late against early. Not going to end well. So yeah, so it's starting to die down now. So I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Um, basically what's happening now that me and, Bur me and Burgundy decided we're going to take out this Devor unit. I'm going to run away and basically play his horse archers and Burgundy's going to shoot him in the back. I'm going to constantly do that. I'm being caught here. Is this mercenary Genoese? I was trying to get it to peel off back here with this unit. And to go and join Lorraine on top of this hill. But it's just not going to happen. This is not good for Brabant. That already units are wavering before they even get to combat. They're just wavering as they walk away. So that's not a good sign. So Brabant is not looking good. Um, Kiev's looking a bit more steady. Because I think his units are a bit more elite. Sergeants, I guess, are mid-tier-ish. But I'm probably going to make a cut here because all that happens now for a good little while is just getting these units get chased around. And we break a couple of units. I think we break this Devore unit in a, mo in a moment. And I think we catch this unit of uh, Kievan nobles. So we do break a couple more units, but it's just not really worth showing. Um, and it's going to just drag this battle along longer than it really needs to be. So I will see you guys in a moment when the second stage of this battle begins. So here we are on the final stage of the battle. It was a pretty big cut. You didn't miss much. Just a few units of archers being chased down by us. But this is what is left of the, uh, well, of Lorraine and myself. We have, I have one unit of Mercy Genoese. Uh, he has uh, one of his Pavis units left. And this is his army here. He has cavalry and a general. Um, but the balance power is not in our favor. We have a... Uh, about a 500 man disadvantage, a pretty distinct disadvantage. It looks like he's going to try and chase down uh, this Pavis unit here with his crossbows. It's an interesting decision. It could did nearly catch them, but I mean, yeah, Kiev and uh, Brabant do have overwhelming like numbers and units. It's just whether they can use them right. And currently, they and they have a lot of ammo, so they could focus us down with ammo. And I uh, would be annoyed. I would be annoyed, but it would be a fairly good tactic. We're such a great battle so far. It's like come down to the like the very last few men. I hate to end it with just a 
few awful volleys, but I mean, it looks like Brabant's going to be the first one going in. Just getting his sergeants ready and into position. But it do this battle does have a very nice, epic ending. So, uh, definitely worth staying around. If you stuck around this far, stick around to the end. Uh, it's definitely worth seeing how this one ends. Here we go, a nice volley, focusing down these sergeants here. This unit of sergeants are already wavering, so we're just trying to break it permanently, like we did here with this uh, crossbow unit, using every bolt we have. I mean, yeah, these guys won't hold long, I would have thought, when they get into combat. But here we go, it's going to be the first clash over here. We've got some, uh, just basic, I don't know what these are, Sa Sawel de Man? They're just, they're just a sword unit anyway, up against sergeants. And there we go. We will see what happens. Pike's coming up already. He's already... He's not going to let them just get focused down. As like... I mean, he's focusing down the general, it looks like. His, uh... His Brabant. And he's trying to break... And now, uh, the Dismount Devor being sent up to break them with fire arrows. And they're doing a good job. They got this one to waver. Really just need to send the cavalry in. I just send the cavalry in route this, uh... All these uh, archers here, but here we go. One unit's not going to make it. But this one should. Oh, it's going to be nasty. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of cavalry actually getting burnt there. It's a real shame. The other cavalry unit actually didn't go there. It went into the side here against these sergeants. Not a bad idea. Pikes here fighting against the uh, sergeants. They should win that fight. And here comes Kiev now with a lot of troops. He has a lot of dismounted nobles left. Look at the amount of these guys left in Rataniki, Rataniki, I don't know what, Ratniki, sorry. This is a, me a medium melee unit as well. But yeah, there we go. So oh, this is like Brabant's breaking quite heavily. The cavalry though is go gone, if not going. Um, Lorraine's force to pull his, his general back. And he really needs to send forward these last units of pikes and uh, shock infantry. I've got Genoese crossbows that can basically just go into combat now. They're out of ammo. As can uh, the Lorraines, really. They're kind of out of ammo. Just need to use these guys to hold them up so they can get the pikes in place. Once they have the pikes in place, there's no getting past them. These poor Pavis are getting cut down. Look at him getting his Pavis out. Yes, I'll take you all on. That guy was still trying to shoot people, and unfortunately, yeah, the Pavis are just getting cut down. It's a real shame. Um, they may return. I don't think so, though. But, I mean, Brabant has lost most of his army already. I mean, he's just got a lot of crossbows left. It's still starting to return, like, after it breaks. But it's it's not ending well. He's got past the line here. But just to break. This, look at this thin line of pikes that were holding them back. They really need to, the enemy need to like focus this little point here. There's literally one pikeman holding back this entire area here. I think they are trying to focus them down with crossbows currently. Well, not crossbows, dismount Devour. Winning this fight over here because of the shock infantry. Where is the general? He's over here. Yes, he certainly needs to go and take out this, uh, these archers here. Break them before they surround these uh, pikes. But this front line now is uh, pretty brutal. This is the final stand. Dismount, uh, d either Dismount Devor or just like Kievan Nobles. I think it's Kievan Nobles and Ratniki in here against uh, these medium melee infantry that Lorraine can bring. And Pikes. And that's it. The Pikes look they're gonna move. I don't know what they're doing, quite what they're doing, but they're leaving this sword unit a bit high and dry. Is this all? Is that everything committed really? No, they've got a unit back here of swords that could kind of go in and needs to go in. It's certainly against his Ratniki. He's got to send that unit in. He's going to surround the pikes here. Real problem there. Yeah, not good. These guys are going to uh, feel the pain. But I'm sending in my Mercy Genoese. They've got a... Uh, don't know how many kills now. But they've got a lot of kills. And they have been sent in. The brave men of Geno Genoa. They're going to do their bit. Look at them. They're all blood stained. They've been in combat as much as they've been shooting now. And here they go, into the charge. Let's take out this Ratniki. They'll have none of it. They're big shields. Yeah, look at that guy chopping away, jumping in the air. He's enthusiastic. He knows what's going to happen. Yeah, let's get some kills. And now the shock infantry that uh, Lorena's left has been sent in. 
for the Pikes. I think the Pikes are done for. They're certainly going to be pretty beaten up. Oh, no, but the Ratniki might break. It might break. General Hare is still doing okay. We're basically one on this flank. We're just going to break this one unit of Devore, which are pretty good in combat, but with no general, it's tough to say. There we go. The Ratniki's breaking. Now we're just carrying on through to support the Pikes. My Pavi's crossbows are carrying on. They've got a bloodlust now. They're going to carry on the fight. And what, here we go, the encircle, encirclement spots begin. We've got pikes surrounding this huge bob here. Can they get another volley off these Devorb just in time? Noose! You fools, they're getting close! Can they also take out some of the general units? Nope, they're going to put their, uh, their bows down. No, there's some of them shot, but not many. They're still using fire arrows, which at this point I wouldn't be trying to use. I wouldn't be trying to use them at all. I'd be trying to take out the uh, general just with normal arrows or maybe with heavy shot. But I mean, they're going to break this unit over here as well. And then the flanks seem like they're going to be sorted. But the general needs to be careful because the unit does not divorce getting in here. And they might be able to take the general out. They're pretty beaten up with the general now and the divorce looks fairly fresh. Chopping heads off. Excellent. Cavalry being taken down. And there we go. Lorraine's general is dead. I'm, the Duke of Lorraine is dead. So it could come down to anything. Look at this. This wavering now. Honda arms about to break. This unit's going to break though. The pikes could be all that's left. Pike can go in here. This sword unit just needs to hold. And more units returning. This is Melchior and nobles are returning. And they've steadied. We need to surround this unit quickly with pikes. Kievan nobles have not quite had enough. And the balance power is, uh, could go either way. I mean, there's so few men left. It's 300 versus 200 now. We've turned the balance of numbers around, but... I mean, both sides are so knackered and just tired. And they've had enough. They've had enough. They could Either side could break. And I'd say with the dismount of Devor and Kievan nobles, and, like, disciplines on... Kiev side but then it depends if that discipline can break through pike lines but how's it looking now I mean that unit of swords is going to wave it there we go the swords unit over here is broken and I just was insisting to the Lorraine player just make sure this unit breaks chase it down make sure it's fully broken but here we go, because he doesn't need to send all these pikes in. He's surrounded all his, all his men. And here we go. It looks like it's going to be a Lorraine victory. Kiev has just not got enough in him. And a Pyrrhic victory indeed. And what a battle. A great ending. It could have come down to, like, literally either side breaking. It's just all it took. And uh, unfortunately, it was going to be Kiev that broke first. But well played to all the players that took part in this uh, battle. It was a really, really good good battle um yeah i played as uh, georgia i've got a fairly fairly just average like amount of kills i mean my generally crossbows that stayed to the end got 215 but they eventually broke and uh, didn't do much my cab did okay but it just kind of ended up getting bogged down in huge fights and just it needed to just go after archers and get if it's gonna get lots of kills um poon slayer who played as burgundy who yeah, he just kind of got overwhelmed. Like, his uh, Dismounted Chevaliers here, which are late, did really well. You can tell it got 205. And then, like, the other one's got 80. But his, like, other ones here, Dismounted Chevaliers early, just didn't do anything. They just weren't worth bringing. His um, Archers did... Actually, I don't know. No, these are Pikes. Um, these are Halberdiers. They did okay, but not great. They needed to be supported with infantry, really. His Sergeants got overwhelmed. Wow, they got even, like, destroyed even more. Um, and his... Bowman did okay, but not amazing. His Cav did average as well. But Sachex, who was playing as Lorraine, did excellent. I mean, most of his units getting over 100 kills. His Cav doing well, getting 169. His um, Saxwell, uh, Sawell um, demand getting like 140, 150. It's nearly 200. Wow, this one actually did get 233. His Pikes doing well, getting over 170 odd kills. His Homdet Arms getting 245. Excellent. His General getting 202. Um, and his crossbow is getting like 
102. I didn't even realise he didn't bring that many crossbows. He did not bring that many crossbows. Thought he brought more, but clearly not. Um, but yeah, and then we'll quickly have a look at the um, opponents. So, Barak B, who was playing against Dutch and Saxony. Um, yeah, unfortunately, bringing so many swords just did not pay off um, in the end. They're, not many of them got many kills. They just seemed to get taken out by pikes and um, well, the superior um, swords. His cavalry did pretty poor as well. His general did okay. But yeah, he's just Saxony, Saxony just got overwhelmed by Lorraine. Kiev um, probably one of the, did one of the best out of the attackers or the other opponents. Not really a, either side attacking and defending. Got 200 odd kills with his um, dismounted Kievan nobles. Excellent. And then his uh, axeman here getting 100 dead. And his cavalry just, I think, did get outclassed by the um, Burgundy's cavalry. And his archers getting 179 kills. So that's very good. Then um, Prem, who was playing as... Oh, yeah, I should say Skosa was playing as Kiev. Prem, who was um, playing as the Duchy of Brabant, um, did fairly well as well. Um, his Brabantian knights, uh, which were dismounted, getting 169 kills. That's not bad. His general getting 121. His archers doing okay, getting 123. His gunners just... Yeah, gunners I don't think do very well in this. They just seem to like do more damage to morale than they do to anything else. His um, sergeants getting 122, the best unit. And his cavalry, the best, getting 116. Actually, quite a few of his cavalry did quite well. Um, but again, it just got taken out. So they ended up with no cavalry at the end, which is a shame um, for them, obviously, if you were rooting for that side. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the battle, then please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment if you want to show your support. And until next time, Legionnaires...